Um, well, look, I uh, let's get into our next interview, and uh, I'll just background you on my social private social media page on as I often do, bored in the weekends and lonely. I saw a story online uh, from uh, Post, a stuff-owned newspaper, and it was a story called Going, Going, Gone was the headline, The Great Wellington Exodus Begins. And because I'm a passionate Wellingtonian and I live here, I thought I'd read it. And I got about halfway through it and I just posted words to the effect, well, this is just pure politicised propaganda. Um, and left it at that and thought that was the end of it, just me being a little bit arch. Uh, but then I find that David Farrer, who I think we've had on the programme, oh, and we had him on about this issue yesterday, David Farrer finds out that the person who writes the article is a former political staffer for Jacinda Ardern and I think Kerry Allen. Um, and one of the people she interviews is a former colleague of hers, is also an interview, uh, is also was a staffer for Kerry Allen. And the whole piece opens with an anonymous guy called Pete having a dream, a pretty nasty dream, some would say almost a defamatory dream about Nicola Willis, and that is the basis for the whole story. I find out later, and I don't know, I've done all the crosswords I wanted to do, so I didn't buy the post on Saturday morning, that it was the front page lead on the paper. And it was a very weird story that uh, attracted quite a lot of comment. Now, I have gone back and looked at the author, Judy Jacobson. She's been in journalism for 20 years. About half of that, as a journalist, about half of that doing comms for governments and government departments. Should the fact that she has done that sort of work have been disclosed in the article? And should her connection to one of her sources in the article have been disclosed as well? Well, those, I think many people think yes, and call me old-fashioned, but I think yes too. Um, so who do we put that issue to? Um, in a good world where people are open, transparent, and prepared to box the corner, you put it to the editor of the newspaper. And can I say quite delightfully uh, that the editor of the Post newspaper joins us now to discuss this very issue. Tracy, I'd like to thank you sincerely for being here. Thank you, Sean, and thank you for asking me. Although I feel like I'm sort of like a lamb to the slaughter after listening to you and da uh, David Sarah yesterday. I, was, I thought... Well, that's why I want to give you a right of reply. <laughs> it's just good old school, Jim. Now, are you on the speakerphone or are you, are you on the speakerphone or on your handpiece? Oh, look, I'm on the speakerphone, sorry. I uh, well, it makes it a little bit harder, and I do not you want you to be disadvantaged, disadvantaged for yeah. people to hear you. So if you can go... Okay. Look, I'll try on the, on the, I'll turn that off and put it on the not speaker on phone. The Hang on a is that better? That is so much better. So much better, Tracy. Okay, right. Okay, well, I no longer feel like a lamb for this photo because you're giving me a chance to be heard. So. All um, right. No, I listened, I listened to you and David yesterday and I think you're talking about hate speech and all these things. I think, I mean, let's, let's all just get a grip here. This story is the story that everyone in Wellington is talking about over dinner at the water I am cooler. not talking. Wellington no, Tracy, I want to stop you. Not everyone is talking about anonymous Pete's dream about Nicola Willis. <laughs> I know. I, get, I think, well, Nicola Willis has made her feelings clear on that. That's fine. Is she? You know, I mean, she... she Hang on, how, has she, Tracy? How did she do that? Has she contacted you? Oh, she texted me, you know, and she's entitled to do that. And, and what did she say and about your story? Oh, well, she didn't like everyone. She didn't like the dream, you know, the, the start of it. But at the end of the day, if, if, if that's the biggest thing she's got to worry I gave her all the press secretaries were in a flap on Monday as well. Honestly, they've got bigger things to worry about, to be honest. But, I mean, okay, so she didn't like the dream sequence. But at the end of it, that story went through everything that everyone in Wellington is talking about. We all know that Wellington's in a funk. The quotes that we I'm going about to agree, here, Tracy, that the arse end of it well, the, the back of the story <laughs> was full of people who were well uh, qualified, but you know as well as I do that you write a news story like an inverse pyramid and the most important stuff, the most credible stuff, yeah. should be at the top. And all the yeah. detritus and anonymous Pete's dream about Nicola Willis should have been down the bottom. <laughs> so why was it at the top? 
it's a story. It's a colour piece, but we have covered the story. It's not a colour piece. It's a piece about yeah. the death of Wellington. Well, yeah, and we've covered that day in day out. We've covered every angle of it. I mean, you you read the post. I think. I hope you do. If you're a Wellingtonian, uh, look, Tracy, we I'm going to actually give you a compliment. I am reading more of the post since you've been editor than I did before. <laughs> Well, that's good. Thank you, Sean. I'm glad about that. Tell all your friends on social media. Yeah. No, I mean, we. I get it. I am a little bit different to some editors, I guess. I don't mind leading with something that's got sort of a slightly different injury on a weekend. I accept that during the, the week, it's sort of we all go hard news and everything. But on the weekend, I think people are looking for a different way into Oh, so you don't do real journalism on the weekend. You throw all the journalistic <laughs> ethics out the window on the weekend. How's that throwing the ethics out the window if we have a different style of writing? Can you still, explain to me, can you explain to me if you are comfortable with an anonymous person's very negative dream about an actual politician leading a story? Well, Nicola Willis is the face. She's the emblematic of the public service job cuts. And in fact, National complains on that. And, and that's your fat flagship. Policy. I don't see really. Do why you believe it, you know, that Pete exists? Do you know who yes, Pete is, I Tracy? Do. I believe he exists, and I absolutely. I have worked with Julie off and on over the last thirty years. She's a journalist of absolute integrity. She spent half her time working as a as a PR person or a government media advisor, and half the time as a journalist. Yeah, but you've worked as a government PR person. Uh, Tracy, and a, and I am today. To I think I, Tracy, today I'm celebrating 40 years in journalism. I spent eight weeks working for Gareth Morgan, not a political party. He's never been a serving politician, Tracy. So I don't know, say he's, he's half my half of half of, of her career in PR and spin and ministerial advice is in any way comparable to me. And I've always disclosed it. Eight weeks with Gareth Morgan in 2017 in a 40-year career. I guess the point I'm trying to make here, what part about that story is wrong? Is it wrong to say that Wellington is taking a bigger hit than anywhere else because public service jobs have disappeared? We all know that, you know. The story actually doesn't go into the rights or wrongs of that. It's talking about the impact of that on Wellington, and we all know the impact of that. Okay, the person you've Did Nicola out Willis think the dream reason. story was a reasonable portrayal of her, or was she upset by it? Oh, she was upset by it, and that's fine. She's allowed to be And did you alter the story that things. was published in the newspaper as a result online of her being upset? Well, I took one bit out, which was I agreed with the start of it, which was you couldn't make it up. But then we went into straight into the dream sequence. We couldn't alter that Have at all. Have you offered so, Nicola Willis an op-ed this weekend to make up for what you did oh, to her? Oh, so she's... Oh, so she's talking to you about this. No, no, well, she's not please. talking to me. I have sources <laughs> that I protect. Uh, a, a guy oh, called okay. Pete. A guy called Pete told me that he had a dream about it. Tracy. Ah, right. Okay. Uh, I'm not going to tell you what's in our paper tomorrow. You're one of our competitors, so you'll find out what's in the paper. Oh, it's Saturday nice that you've elevated Saturday. me to competitor. I'm normally <laughs> he whose name shall not be spoken. Um, oh, Tracy, Tracy, I've I do yeah. want to ask why didn't you disclose? And also, let, let's get on. We haven't got through it yet. The connection, the fact that Jane Julie Jacobson interviewed someone in the in there, the second person he used to work for. Um, yeah, we're always, yeah, and what did that person say? They said they're leaving Wellington because housing's too expensive, the cost of living t is too much, there's no job stability, and there's a lack of job opportunity. Who is going to disagree with that? No, Honestly, they they they, I mean, they they sheeted it home to the current government. In fact, they well, said no, it's utterly beat. The cuts to the public sector aren't just constrained to the government. To the it's government. Affecting, it's affecting, affecting the private, private sector as well. Are you disagreeing with that? It read like, and that's why I said it on Saturday, it reads like we political all, propaganda, can't. Tracy. And I'm sorry, but, you wonder why only 33% of New Zealanders trust the mainstream media. No, I don't. But what I think, but let's get don't back you want, to that. Can you sentence. tell me why let's then? Why does no one trust you? <laughs> I think our readers trust us. They have confidence in us, and that's the main thing. 